The court verdict in the matter of eight ANC Mangaung region councillors who were expelled from the ANC and challenged their expulsion from the party will finally be handed down today. The councillors were expelled earlier this year after voting with the opposition party where the Democratic Alliance's councillor Mareke Davies was elected as the speaker despite the fact that the ANC had the council majority. The Mangaung municipality has yet to vote on a permanent mayor. This has yet again brought the Free State Provincial provincial government under scrutiny after it has experienced a number of service delivery and ch leadership challenges as well. The question is, how stable is the provincial leadership to win over the voters in next year's elections? To discuss this further, we are joined virtually by University of the Free State's governance analyst, Dr. Ina Khos, and political analyst, Professor Setolejo Matabesi. Good to have both of you. Thanks very, very much for joining us on the program. Good morning. Uh, Prof, let me begin with you on this one. So the court will today give its verdict in the matter of the eight ANC Mangaung region councillors who were challenging their expulsion from the party after they voted with the opposition in March this year. The question is, is the municipality on the verge of collapsing? Uh, good morning, uh, Leanne, and good morning to your viewers. What a, a, very, what a very good question to start off with. For me, the Mangaung Metropolitan Municipality has already collapsed in terms of service delivery. There's been huge problems at this municipality for quite some time. And it, it, you should go around this beautiful city, the city of roses, just to see with your naked eye what is the impact of lack of governance, decisive leadership, and, and having basic operations in place. The residents of this municipality feeling the brunt of the infighting within the African National Congress. And if your municipality in the capital city is not functioning well, the question is, what about the rest of the other? municipalities in the free state. So for me, uh, the municipality is already on the brink of collapse in terms of service delivery, in terms of governance, and, and many other issues where it seems as if there's a vicious recycling of the leadership of this municipality, which has huge implications for service delivery. Yeah. And I mean, Doctor, I'll ask you the, the, the same question as well, Dr. Khos, in terms of do, do you believe that the municipality has collapsed or is on the verge of collapsing. And also, I suppose one needs to add into this, how deep are these political tensions within the ANC Free State Province? Well, I think uh, when you look at history, recent history, the um, history we had with Esma Khashule and uh, the factionalism that came with his tenure in the Free State and the effect and impact um, that had on the Free State up to now, it's very clear that that infighting of the ANC and the, the, the divisions within the party has created enormous um, disarray and uh, to a, an extent, not just a collapse in, 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 in service delivery as the Prof has alluded to, but it started with the collapse of leadership because people were uh, you know, bring, brought into very key positions in the free state, not for the sake of service delivery, but for the sake of keeping and developing um, networks of patronage, which, you know, the, basically bled the province dry uh, in, in on every level. And um, it, it, the metro more so than, than, than most. You can see the problems that they had with electing new leadership, uh, the AG reports that, uh, you know, accused the Metro of, of, of failing when it comes to reporting on, on, on the financial matters because key positions were not filled. And that is directly because of the divisions within the party that we uh, have a leadership collapse, which, which led to the rest of the problems that the, the province and all the municipalities face. Yeah, and one of the big problems, I mean, we saw what was, what, what, what was happening in the lead up to the, um, uh, the elective conferences. I mean, that, it, was, it was an absolute shambles when we saw what was going on there in the Free State. And, you know, people are, are asking the questions, Professor. I mean, 
factions within the ruling party and the free state, it's, it, it certainly does from what we're seeing and reading and, and hearing, is that this is actually going to be the cause of the collapse of the province. Um, do you agree with the sentiment? Yes, I, I do agree with the sentiment, but I must also add to, we've seen a lot of positives happening since <clears throat> the election of the new leadership. I mean, there's a road that has been closed here where people have to take a detour of almost 30 kilometers to just reach out of 20 kilometers or 14 kilometers to reach the other part of the, the town that has been open. So one can see there seems to be a move towards the positive in terms of or of, of uh, service delivery. But the problem is, and, and, and I have been very clear on this one, I, I strongly believe that the ANC made a mistake by removing uh, the Premier at this stage. I mean, it was a couple of months away from a general elections or a year. Uh, but we all know the Premier might also have been under tremendous pressure from those who supported him to make that particular change and ensure that changes are take, take, do take place. But fact of the matter is, uh, if you look at this infighting, I, I strongly believe it's so entrenched and people have become so accustomed to do things in a certain way where I would say complete lack of accountability, lack of monitoring was the order of the day. And now suddenly they need to subscribe to good governance. And it's very difficult for people uh, to do that overnight. And that's why then they will use their political f affiliation, the political network to fight those who are actually calling for changes. And that in itself will determine to what extent the ANC in the free state, which is which, I mean, if you look at the electoral support over the past couple of uh, years, you will see that the ANC was also a stronghold, I mean, the free state of the African National Congress. Now, going forward, we've seen also the scenes in Paris where some supporters of the uh, Demarashule uh, started banning, uh, you know, ANC T-shirts and all that. But I do not think uh, there are too many uh, supporters of the, or even often that the Ish Mahashud would like to align, in, uh, align themselves with him if he is to join uh, another political formation. Because I think for them, they have realized that that will be too societal because most of them are also in senior provincial positions or government positions and they would not like to take that particular risk. Mm -hmm. But going forward, what happened with the elections within Mangahum, it was a clear indication that the ANC in the province needs to start engaging with these disgruntled members because they can hurt the party going forward. Indeed. I mean, recently we saw, we saw protesters in the uh, uh, Fizilidabi region in the Free State and they were, they were um, burning ANC regalia in protest against the expulsion from the uh, party of the former Secretary General Ace Mahashule. Um, is, is the province, uh, uh, Doctor, I'll, I'll give this one to you, but if you would like to, to chip in as well, Professor, please do. I mean, is the province ready for next year's elections? When you talk about the systems um, and, and, and the processes with uh, about elections, then yes, we still have an IEC that's working very well. When it comes to the, the political parties, uh, and specifically the ruling party, if they are ready for, for um, the, um, uh, the elections, then the answer is a resounding no. Uh, they are trying to position themselves as, as, as Professor said, uh, doing certain things in the province to show that they um, are trying to address service delivery. But these things, in my opinion, are in the broader sense, superficial. It's, it, they, are, they are things that are easy to show that um, are, are evident that they can, can do something right. But my problem is the intrinsic problems on, on local level. And that's going to take a very long time for a party like the ANC, for this administration in general, to clean up. Mm. And I think, in my opinion, that, that boat has sailed. I don't think if they, this administration is capable of the cleanup that's necessary, the so-called renewal that is necessary before the elections to, to, to make an impact on, on a voter's mind, in my opinion. And you know, the parties like the EFF who has uh, pretend 11%, 
uh, want those votes that are not going to go to the ANC. And if you start talking about, you know, putting voters again on this merry-go-round with leadership that is walking over from one to the next, they are not going to fall for it. There's already such a cynical, um, you know, attitude, particularly in the province, particularly in the metro, that your challenge is not just going to be the big challenge of getting new voters to the polls, but getting those who have voted back to the polls, yeah. those who have been disillusioned. And I don't think the ruling party uh, has the capability uh, nor the power of persuasion to be able to do that. And now the question is whether the opposition parties will have it in them to have a message to have convince people to vote otherwise. Yeah. And um, it is an opportunity because uh, change is definitely needed in the province, most definitely needed on, 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 in, on local level with the municipalities and certainly in the metro. Prof, very, very quickly, ha have you seen an increase in popularity in the opposition parties like the DA and the EFF? I know you spoke to, to the EFF, but um, are voters seeing hope in that direction? Uh, unfortunately, not, uh, because even with all the problems that the ANC is facing, I know their election machinery will come into play in terms of support, uh, campaigning and all that. And that is always, and I, that is my prediction, even if the ANC gets below, I mean, nationally 48%, they will still be in the control seat yeah. because they will dictate the terms in terms of, you know, uh, coalition governments. It's the same what it's going to play in. Your Democratic Alliance, the EFF, the main majority party, opposition parties, still need to master a very basic uh, 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 election uh, campaign instrument, and that is to put food soldiers uh, almost to every corner of the province. And unfortunately, they failed this month in that regard. And that's where the African National Congress, despite all the challenges that it is facing, is still maintaining to, uh, maintaining its stronghold, even if uh, definitely the trust has definitely eroded yeah. in uh, the political party. I, I, I want to just very, very quickly, we've got a, we've got a minute left. So, um, Dr. Khos, I'll give this one to you. I mean, we saw yesterday the um, um, uh, uh, Justice Zondo speaking about the state capture report and how, you know, he feels that none of the recommendations have actually been implemented and that state capture can happen at any time again, because this is, this is how slowly it's been looked into and worked on. But in 2019, the Free State was really described in a media article as the symbol of the human and political cost of state capture. I mean, it was a once politically powerful province it really seems to have further deteriorated uh, going into next year's elections. What went wrong here? I mean, we look at a province here that, that in the 2021-2022 local government audit report, um, it showed that not a single municipality received a clean audit opinion. Not one of them. And the problem here is, um, as I said, a, a complete leadership collapse. And the kind of leadership for whom service delivery uh, is not the priority. Patronage was, looting was, and keeping people in place in positions who could keep those networks going. And those are, are still left, unfortunately, throughout the province in on all levels that have not been um, disrupted as a sense. So the case state capture that the, the, the judge is talking about that can happen again, in my opinion, is is still happening. Yeah. In the free has not stopped at all. And and, and that is this uh, that is the reality of it. All right. We leave it there. Thank you so much to to our guests here on the program, Dr. Ina Host, Governance Analyst and Professor uh, Setolejo Matabisi, who's a political analyst from the University of the Free State, talking to us about the political and leadership challenges that are faced by the Free State.